Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, a small jet shop somewhere in um, the Midwest. Okay, we're going to con continue with the combustion chamber and fuel manifold nozzle assembly. Uh, I'm going to try to get it wrapped up in this video if possible, so uh, let's just go right on to it and we'll show you. Um, we've introduced uh, the combustion chamber and how it functions basically and we've introduced and shown you the fuel manifold and the fuel nozzles and got them assembled and torqued and tight so now we're going to uh, go ahead and assemble the manifold fuel nozzle assembly to the combustion chamber itself all right so here we go here we have some fuel manifold and nozzle uh, hardware and what we have here are these rings these are basically air seals. One goes around each. We fit that. One goes at each nozzle and this fits up against the hole here and that seals more or less loosely but it keeps air from just blasting in around this fuel nozzle. It gives it a little shelter. That's how you keep a fire lit in a really high wind. You have a shelter around it. Okay, That's part of the secret. So there's 12 of these little washers or seals. They're just very thin steel. Okay. And then uh, we have these little blocks of stainless steel. Have two holes drilled through them. And we have these little stainless steel clamps. They fit over the fuel manifold tubing like that. And they also line up with the holes in the blocks. And then we have screws or fasteners. Alright, and two of those at each block, all these, three set, three of these assemblies hold this fuel manifold on the back of here. Alright, and then obviously, I bet if we look closely here, oh my gosh, look, if you can see, um, that has holes in it, so guess what, safety wires. Alright, safety wire, yay. Alright. So there's a little close up of some of these pieces and we will go ahead and get to putting that on where it belongs. Alright, we're going to uh, double check the position of our combustion chamber uh, real quick before we start assembling the fuel manifold to it. And the reason is we want our fuel inlet to come through Let's look here. This is the um, cowling or the outer case of the engine, the main center case. All right, this is uh, where the fuel inlet would be. In other words, our fuel line attaches to a fitting that protrudes or threads into the fuel manifold through this hole. So our fuel manifold has to be oriented so or such that the inlet is at the bottom here. This would be the six o'clock position again. Uh, bottom of the engine okay this is the front and back here this flange is where our exhaust nozzle assembly would attach what I'm doing here is using this cowling as a fixture to hold the combustion chamber because it's at a convenient working height all right all right back to the indexing and making sure this is all setting right the igniter or spark plug opening has to line up with the igniter spark plug opening on the cowling. So in other words when this is installed it'll sit just like it is now. This is the front of the combustion chamber. This is the rear of the combustion chamber. So this hole will coincide with this hole and then the manifold mounted to this front will line up with this hole. Okay, so we got to be sure we got our indexing right. That is why I'm doing this step. Okay, per the service manual, um, the way they recommend installing these uh, air seals, these little washers, is like this. Place them here, and then we're going to set the combustion. We're going to set the combustion chamber, turn it upside down, and set it over these. Then it says to pick the whole thing up and turn it the other way so you can install the 
retainers and screws. So we'll see, see if that works. Got all 12 of these on here. Okay. Let's move our goodie tray out of the way. Okay, once again, we got to be sure we got the uh, fuel inlet here at the bottom, the 6 o'clock location. Alright, double check that here. Okay, the igniter or spark plug goes here. There's the hole for it. There's the bottom, which is the fuel inlet. And all the little nozzles are poking through. Okay, good. Now can I pick this up and turn it over? Well, let's see. Alright, got all of it. I think we can do this. Ta-da! Okay, there it goes. And we'll move it over here to the makeshift um, fixture that I got here, which is actually the cowling to hold this while we uh, assemble. Put the fasteners and retainers and all that in. All right, we're getting ready to install the uh, spacers, uh, straps, and screws that hold the um, fuel manifold to the combustion chamber so that'll be really exciting I'm sure you can't wait uh, obviously you saw me do the little I think I've edited this if I put this together correctly you should have just seen me install the, install the little uh, seals air seals uh, look like washers I just put them over each one of the bosses uh, into which the fuel each fuel nozzle screws that's a total of 12 and then uh, set the combustion chamber um, front side down over the nozzles and then grab the whole thing as one, you know, fuel ring, fuel manifold and the combustion chamber and then flip it over and now we have it here, which you can see. So we got our, um, basically is in position. We got the fuel uh, manifold is in position and it's ready to have install our uh, spacer blocks and there's a little strap and then two screws at each uh, at three locations. This is exactly what the manual says to do. Believe it or not, I didn't just invent that move, but this is exactly how they tell you to do it uh, to keep those uh, washers in place. As you can see, this is sloped, so if we were to try to lay these uh, seals or washers here, they would never stay. You would have to use grease or something to keep them stuck but then you got residue so we follow directions at least most of the time okay well we're going to get busy we have let's see spacer block let's just get enough tension on that that dude will stay right there and here's a and yeah, we'll put a little anti-seize compound on here so
screwing these um, screws in hand tight, as snug as I can, you know, turning them with this little uh, extension attached to the hex bit. Now all we need to do is use a torque wrench and set them to the proper specs. And then we will have installed our fuel manifold and nozzle assembly. Well, once again, we have our trusty snap-on torque wrench set. Um, the, spec the manual specifies tw 20 to 40 uh, inch pounds, so we have uh, selected 30. Got it locked, so we're going to go ahead and tighten these now. Torque them down. safety wiring to do. Okay, here we go, final product. We got the screws on, got our safety wire between them, hold them in place. Alright, so there's an overview of the, the front end of the combustion chamber. Okay, we'll flip this over and we'll give you a look inside. All right, I'll take a look down inside here and see. This is what it should look like. Pretty good condition, I think. Here, boy, it looks a lot better than it did. Nice and clean and shiny. You kind of go around, you can see all twelve nozzles. All right, we're gonna wrap it up. That takes care of the combustion chamber assembly, uh, which is really just a few pieces parts, just like um, kind of like the intake housing, not a lot to it. Before long, we will be ready to assemble um, the major component groups, uh, major assemblies into the, uh, I guess what would become a J44. We'll be covering the rotor assembly on the next uh, video. That will, um, that will cover the compressor, uh, the shaft, the stub shafts on each end, and then of course the uh, turbine wheel itself. And also that was the uh, assembly that uh, Agent JZ uh, worked on and balanced, as you saw in uh, one of his videos, uh, I think back in December maybe. So we'll get to see that, and then um, the next... Um, I think from that point on, we'll be ready to start putting those all those assemblies together. Hopefully, come up with a J44 when it's all said and done. All right. Again, appreciate your interest, your time, and thanks for watching.